How are you doing? I'm really good, Andrew. How are you? Uh, I'm great. <laughs> Especially to be here with you. Uh, it's a real honor to be here with you. And uh, before we get into all of your accomplishments in your life and, and the things that make you amazing, I want to hear all about where you were born. Where I was born. Yeah. Um, I was actually, I was born in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Uh -huh. um, because at that point in time, my father had a job at the penitentiary. Okay. Uh, he had come to Canada in 55 as an Irish immigrant. The only job that he could get at that point was um, in the residential school system. He was my mother's math teacher. She was in the residential school system as a student. And when she graduated, um, the nuns gave her a wedding. Not like the one in Sound of Music, although in my head it was always like that wedding. Right. And uh, then they moved around, just taking whatever jobs he could get. Mm -hmm. And the one he had when I was born was at the penitentiary in Prince Albert, teaching okay. inside the pen. So my father's taught Indians, prisoners. Um, he's actually, right. he was a, a draftsman. Okay. So I was born in PA. And then when I was six, we moved to Winnipeg. Again, Wait a second, he was a draftsman. Yeah. Numbers. Huh. Right. Drafting. Okay. Mathematics. Yeah. Okay. And he must have been very patient. My father? He must have been. To do that job, how could you... He did it for years, right? He is pretty... My father is both patient and impatient. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say there's got to be some... There's got to be a dichotomy within yes. him about that. Because he, you know, he could have left. He could have stopped doing it. Yeah. But like, you know, so many people who come from a colonized people, because he was Irish, right. he left Ireland because the English wanted to draft him into right. the army, right. uh, which he wouldn't do. And my mother, of course, was Algonquin, and um, her she, she had three languages, mm -hmm. um, of which English was her last. Right. French was her second language, and Algonquin was her first language. And so both of them were people who were anxious for change to happen mm -hmm. in a hurry. Mm -hmm. You know, my father came from Ireland, the troubles and everything. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was in the Sinn Féin. So right. Right. they're both people who were anxious for a change. And where was your mom from? She was from Gitaganzi B, Quebec, which okay. is um, Manawaki, just about okay. an hour and a half north uh, of uh, Ottawa. Oh, okay. Right. And so did you ever visit? Their family a lot as okay. uh, children as when we were younger in the summers we would go to the to the res and mm -hmm. live in the my my grandparents ran a, had a camp a summer camp in the bush oh, really? they would make birch bark things and sell them to the tourists who would stop on the side of the road that must have been idyllic it was kind yeah. of yeah yeah um and what were some of the things that what how old were you at the time when you would go to that uh, summer camp um, I was probably tweens and teens, okay. like, you know, from 10 to 15. Those okay. are probably, those are the years I remember. I remember my little brother was a, had a, my littlest brother had a stick and was beating mushrooms. And so he would have been two. So I would have been 11. Beating mushrooms? Yeah. Like if puff balls grow up in the nighttime, so he would go searching <gasps> for them balls, yeah. and then hit them with a stick. You don't have that here. Where, like... I don't. I haven't seen puffballs in years. I know. I guess it's maybe an Ottawa thing, but so because I have memories of that, you know, yeah. smashing puff. So you're, that's what your little brother did. He what, loved to smash puffballs. What was his name? Patrick Nolan. Okay. My littlest brother, Michael Nolan, my in-between brother. Okay. And so it's just three kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're the eldest. Mm -hmm. I am. Oh wow. Yes, uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so were you dependent on a lot to uh, take care of and be responsible and be the one who shows the others how to behave? I don't know if I, if that's the case. I think that the big thing was my mother was so young as mm. a mother when she had me. How old is she? She, well, she married my father at 16 and yeah. she was, I was born, I think when she was 17 or 18. And so we, and because all she had for education was residential school graduated. Mm. And because that was really problematic in terms of education, Mm -hmm. She and I were kind of best friends. Okay. And so we grew we grew up together. We learned a lot together. She mm -hmm. often said when we got to be older, well, do you remember when we were children and we would do this? And right. it was like, oh, that's right. My mother was kind of a child mm -hmm. as my mother in the beginning. 
so that's the, I think that was the, the dynamic in my family was being friends with my mother more than daughter, mother. Hmm. And then by the time the boys came along, you know, she'd had some practice. Right. That would also mean that your father would be in a different sphere. He wouldn't be a friend necessarily. He wouldn't be a buddy necessarily. No. Okay. So he, was he strict? Was he stern? Was he? My father had very clear ideas about what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he came from Ireland, which is a very traditional society. He was 10 years older than my mother, mm -hmm. which um, made a difference. He was the breadwinner for a period of time. There were lots of things that made it challenging, mm -hmm. you know. And it was sort of like for my mother moving from one kind of patriarchal structure to another, to another. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, which is also why, you know, eventually the marriage failed because it, my father wanted something very traditional, right? not the way I think of traditional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my mother wanted to return to something traditional. And so, right. And when did the marriage fail? I was, uh, in my final year of high school. So I was 16. Ah, uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. It's normal age. And. Did you, because when my parents divorced, I was like, thank God. Oh, man, no more yelling and screaming in the house. Awesome. Yeah. Did, was it like that? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and I also feel like because the marriage was already in trouble, was in trouble from about the time I was eight, mm -hmm. both of my younger brothers didn't get the same right. family thing that I got. Right. So they had a very different experience of of mm -hmm. the marriage. But yeah, I was like, oh, it's about time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, everybody just go and be who we are. <laughs> exactly. Go be happy. <laughs> just go be happy. And um, did you ever go to Ireland? Do you ever? Go? I have been to Ireland. I love Ireland. Uh -huh. um, I've been there quite a bit. I actually prefer, my father's from Bray, which okay. is a, a seaside town below Dublin. And right. um, it's okay, but I actually prefer the Galtech. Like, Mm -hmm. up Galway, Donegal, up in that area, right. because it's so beautiful and wild, and and they speak the language there. Right. Okay. And did you see family there? Um, I have seen many of my family. When I was 16 or 17, 16, I guess, I went to... Um, I went to Italy, where my Auntie Barbara, who was my father's youngest sister, had married an Italian and was having children and living in Italy. And uh, so I was very close to her, my mm -hmm. Auntie Barbara, who has since passed. Um, my Uncle Michal, who lived in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Bit of an Irish diaspora. You right. know, my Auntie Mara was in, uh, in the U.S. Like, mm -hmm. it was a bit like, you know, living in the Yukon. You can't really eat the view. Right. Right? Yeah. There's, there, there was no economy. This was pre-Celtic Tiger. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So they were kind of all over the place. Uh -huh. My Auntie Lillian lives and still lives in Avoca, which is in a little tiny cabin in Ireland. So, uh -huh. yeah, I know that side of the family uh -huh. as well. As a child, you probably have uh, memories of your father talking about Ireland. So what, how, what was his and how would he... Because when my parents would talk about Jamaica, it was like golden and, you know, as if it was heaven on earth. But what did he talk about Ireland that way? He talked about the, the land mm -hmm. uh, in that way, the beauty mm -hmm. of the land. He was not nostalgic about Ireland. Okay. Um, Canada had way more for him. Mm -hmm. um, Ireland was very Catholic. And, and that comes with a whole set of challenges. So I think like a lot of people who come to this country, he saw this as a place of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You ever wonder, every now and again I wonder what would I have been like if I'd been raised where my parents were from? Do you ever think that, ever that thought ever crossed your mind? Well, I, in one way I am raised where my parents are from <laughs> because I'm, you know, I'm Algonquin. Uh -huh. And so I live, I am very much born of this land, uh -huh. born of you know, the meeting of native and settler in mm -hmm. this land. Um, but what if you were raised in Quebec? 
what if I were raised in Quebec? I'd probably have better French. <laughs> um, mm. I, I may be more uppity, you mm. know, as an Aboriginal person, if I were raised in Quebec, because the Quebecois really, with all due respect to Robert Lepage, mm -hmm. uh, really hate their Indians. Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 the conflict there is so profoundly rooted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my mother, you know, has been called, they still call them savages, so, right. sauvage, in right. front of you. Huh. Um, so that's, I like Quebec a lot. Mm -hmm. I like the urban centers a lot more than I like the rural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'd been raised in Quebec, I'd probably not be doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I was in discussion with somebody and I used the word autochtone, autochtone mm -hmm. which is indigenous person, indigenous yeah. Person. And the person said to me, Oh, fancy word. Oh, I was like, I, I was like, That's what they are. And the, like, have you ever had an experience like that amongst uh, the Quebecois? I mean, Okay, that you can talk about. Well, that's, I mean, you know, m not personally, but my oh. mother, that's the very experience. My mother was uh, on a plane, either going or coming from Quebec, and this man said, do you mind, would you mind switching so I could sit with my wife? And she said, and she said, no, I, I you know, I ordered this seat special, the window seat, because my mother didn't get to fly a lot. Right. And, uh, and he said to his wife, the savage won't let you have the seat. Oh. And she said, you know, Right. Right? right. Because yeah. because she had more languages than he did. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. more words. Yeah.